I'm so excited. I feel like it's so embarrassing how excited I am. You want to get an idea of how does the camping situation work? Are there showers? Bring flip flops for showering. That is nasty if you do not. How was the toilet situation? Camping? How are we doing it? Transportation. Budget. How much money should I bring for food and alcohol? On a, on a big homie nigga, don't you get this shit twisted? Middle finger up, finger for the competition. Niggas always talking so you know they never listen. P220 turn a nigga to a Christian. Hey, what's up? Hello, it's the girl that was born in the 015 and it's just trying to survive. The one they call a slut and can't keep her mouth shut. The cute with a little. And I'm back with another video, baby. Okay, if you've been subscribed to my channel, what's up? I missed you. If you new here, I hope you're here for a good time in a long time. And if you want to be here for a long time, you better click subscribe, like, right, up and now. Today's video, as you can tell by the title, is about rocking the daisies. We have been waiting for so long for this festival to take place. And it is finally happening. The phase one tickets were sold. And they sold out. Then the phase two tickets were sold. And they sold out. So guys, if that tells you anything, it just means that you must get into your bag. Get the tickets when phase three opens before they sell out so obviously now before you want to go do the things you want to get an idea of how does the camping situation work are there showers how was the toilet situation camping how are we doing it budget how much money should i bring for food and alcohol can i bring my own alcohol and of course you have me who has been twice just twice but i feel like i'm experienced and i'm good at planning and i'm just going to give you some tips and tricks things to look out for things to keep in mind before you come through to wrecking their daisies. I feel like it's so embarrassing how excited I am. You know, they, they announced the lineup. We were a bit like, you know, we had times where we were just like, Who are these niggas? We're the international acts. I can go see Blackie and Clark, but we're not going to talk about that, okay? When it comes to daisies, you have to buy two tickets. Your festival ticket, which allows you to get entrance into the festival, and a camping ticket that allows you to go camping. So now there are two types of camping. There is Daisyland camping, which is glamping, and there is everything else. And that's broken down into different types of things. So first I'm going to get into Daisyland. Daisyland is basically glamping. You don't have to bring anything besides yourself. You just bring your, your clothes. Rocking the daisies will provide you with a tent. There are different tiers. There is the entry level seat. I hate it. The tent is tiny. It is a joke. For those who already purchased it, good luck to you. I would only recommend it if you're one person. Although it says two people because where are you going to put your bags? It is not that big of a tent. And then you have all your other tents which level up with, okay cool, over here you get a blow up mattress and then over here you get a normal mattress and then on the next one you get blankets and then you get to the, get to the cluster seats and you have electric blankets, plug points and all those things. So also keep in mind that you do not always have access to plug points so you can do one of two things or three things. You can buy a power bank. My favorite power bank, a power bank that I am still going to get, is a snug power bank. Beautiful stuff. It can charge your phone to 100% about three times. And there's even more expensive models. And the reason they get more expensive is because there are some that can charge your phone to 100% seven times without having to charge the power bank itself. It's not to say that they will not be charging points wherever and now all our phones are going to die. I mean, you, you might find a friend who's in a different camping site who has access to plug points and you can ask them to charge your phone. I know I used to do that for the homies. There's probably vendors who, you know, at these festivals, there's always people who make you pay to charge your phone. There's that option as well. That's Daisyland. Daisyland is glamorous. It's it's expensive. And I feel like if you have the racks, go off. You want to be comfortable at the festival. Then you have all your other camping sites. You have General. General is the bare minimum. And it fits a lot of people. And with general camping, you have to bring your own tents. All the camping sites that I will mention now, you have to bring your own tent. Then you get priority camping, which you know, you have access to more showers, you have access to more toilets. And it's not to say general doesn't have showers or toilets, it's just less. Which means the lines to go to the shower are going to be longer. 
also those toilets and showers tend to not be as good as the ones in the other camping sites decent enough to do what you got to do but i'm i'm just letting you be aware of that so in priority there are more showers there are more toilets i think they mentioned that you will have access to electricity so that you can blow dry your hair and straighten it and put on like your face like do your face beats and if that's the case that also means there are charging points then you have she said so camping in the past it was just a women's only camp now they have expanded it to make it more inclusive and it's not just women there's everyone in the queer community can feel free to camp here for me this is a personal <laughs> because there's not that many people tickets are limited to only a thousand people so also that makes it great in terms of standing in lines for showers also amazing i've never experienced having to wait 30 minutes to get into the shower i don't know if it's because people are not showering or because there's just more access to showers which makes the line go Awesome. In terms of safety, they're also very strict in terms of who they let in. By the way, if you want to enter a camping site, you will have a certain band around your wrist. So in the past two years that I've always gone to the camping site, security always makes sure like they check your wrist and they'll be like, okay, you can go in. If you have a friend who does not stay in that camping site, they will stay outside. They offer yoga, they have little events. I saw goodie bags and I was just like, I like me some free things. The last time that I went to Rocking the Daisy, they did this really cool thing. I thought it was like, they had this nice stand where everyone could do their makeup. There were plug points so you could blow dry your hair, straighten it, and like these huge mirrors. It, it was giving doing your makeup at a on set for like a movie. Even the chairs that you could sit on to do your makeup. It was just, I always vouch for this place. If you're not in Daisyland, you have to bring your own tent. Keep that in mind. A tent will not be given to you. Closer to the time, there tends to be people who rent out tents. So if you check social media, you'll find that someone's saying like, oh, if you come to Rocking the Daisies, you can rent out this tent and we'll put it up for you, which is like really convenient. Oh. Now you have to bring your own tent. Now you're thinking, where am I gonna get a tent? Do you go to Macro? Do you go to Take A Lot? Take A Lot has a, a range of tents that you can buy. My advice is if you are three people, buy a four person tent. If you are five people, buy a six or seven person tent. The reason for this is that guys, you have bags, you have suitcases, you need to take that into account. You don't want your suitcase to be outside. If it rains, then what must happen? You want there to be enough space in your tent where you guys can put your luggage to one side and still sleep comfortably. So that is tip number one. Tip number two is now in terms of sleeping, what are you going to sleep on? I suggest that you once again buy a blow up mattress because you don't want just a sleeping bag because you'll be sleeping directly on the ground and that is painful. Bring some linen and most importantly guys, also bring blankets. It gets at night the temperature drops at night and you're sleeping in a tent and bring a pillow get a small little lock for your tent we're camping with a bunch of strangers people can get adventurous and want to you know see what's in your tent and steal your tent so get a lock so that every time you leave your camping site, you basically lock your tent. Bring flip-flops for showering. Please do that. That is nasty if you do not. Feel free if you want to beat your face. But another thing you need to keep in mind is usually around that time of the year, it is hot. You don't want to be walking around with like a full face beat. Your face is going to melt off. Another thing you should keep in mind is it gets cold in the evening. So you should have two fits. You know, you know, you want to look sexy and slutty at the end of the day. And then you want to, you can still look sexy and slutty at night, but as long as you have like a something that'll keep you warm because guys the temperature drops bring two sets of clothing one that accommodates the weather during the day and one that you'll still look cute and sexy at night but also be warm i would like to say please don't try drugs for the first time at this festival because you don't know how you're gonna act what's gonna happen don't do that great i'm going to move on to the next thing which is transportation things that you need to keep in mind and things that you should not do when it comes to trying to get to daisies and then getting back from daisies because it's like in the middle of freaking nowhere to get back to cape town a lot of people like to do this thing where like oh it's cheaper to uber there yes from cape town it is extremely cheap to uber especially for like six people you split your uber and you're like oh you know we only pay 50 rand each or 40 rand each the problem with that then comes when you want to come back from daisies and go back 
to Cape Town. There are rarely any Ubers around. I remember ordering an Uber at Daisy's to get my friends back to Cape Town and it took about an hour or two hours to find the Ubers because they're very scarce there. My advice for you is if you go to the airport or you know of a driver, rather organize with them to take you there and to pick you up from the festival easy and convenient another alternative to that is this transport service called zelo zelo would create like a transportation thing specifically for rocking the daisies and they would put you in a nice large bus and a whole bunch of people could take it from different destination points so if you're in stellenbosch there was a zelo bus over there from a certain like stop if you were in tiger valley uh if you, you know uct students there was a bus that was leaving from Tugwell and it was 400 Rand for a return trip and the beautiful thing is they're always on time again very comfortable bus I think it was a luxury bus you choose the time which you want to leave and you show up at the bus stop takes you there and same thing when you are at Daisy's and you want to go back to Cape Town the bus arrives at said time you get in there out no stress about anything I also went through the whole thing of getting a quotation from this company you got two quotations when i was just like okay if six of my friends and i wanted to go to rocking the daisies and we wanted to hire this bus how much would it cost i will put it on the screen and when i divided that number by, by six i think i got 443 and then i said just 444 for a return trip but then i realized we'd also have to add a trailer for our luggage which was 150 according to the quotation 150 you divide that by six again this is then 500 rand to get there and then i took out a quotation for 10 people and again it basically costs the same as the amount for six people but if you're dividing something by 10 it would be much less so that is also an alternative you can go look into i don't know if zelo is going to create another rocking the daisies transportation service but if they don't you and your friends could organize the transport yourself great company very convenient next up we're going to talk about the budget how much money do you need for food and drink in the past i've known that rocking the daisies don't allow you to bring your own drinks like you have to buy all the drinks there but i mean the crooks and the criminals know how to to sneak in their alcohol people get paid usually in the past i would budget 1000 rand to 1500 rand for my food and drinks reason being is turns out i did not eat that much they ate like once a day and also my friend had some snacks like they brought their own we bought like chips and stuff so we would just snack on that and all of their day. Food there isn't very expensive. There are multiple like kiosks that I remember there was black steers. You could get sushi, you could get high food, you could there was a bunch of things you could get, you know, cute breakfast stuff as well. There were people selling coffee. I would say with each meal you should budget like a hundred grand per meal. In terms of alcohol, we saw the surge with the tickets. So I am very afraid in terms of alcohol, like how much they're gonna charge. Are you with 20 rand shots or 30 rand shots? And then you get your, you know, your vodka and Red Bull. I swear that was like 40 rand. And then if they do have the Jägermeister house, like they would have like this concoction and like a cup yay big and it was like 50 bucks or something or just under that. So I don't think you need that much cash. So I would say one, 1,000 to 1,500. 2,000 Rand if you're being very prudent or you're just someone that likes to be generous and you're like, you getting a shot, you getting a shot. Everybody's getting a shot. But I don't think you need more than 2,000 Rand for food and drinks. If you are a student, I think 1,000 to 1,500 Rand will be okay. I just don't believe you need more than 2,000 Rand to budget for that. So I drew this up to give you a rough idea of how much you can expect to spend. This is on the assumption that you are going to share your tent with one other person and you're going to split the expense of a blow up mattress. Maybe you already owe one. I haven't included things like the power bank because maybe you don't want to buy one. Maybe your camping site does have charging points. Possibly maybe you're willing to go pay those people to allow you to charge your phone. So there's that as well. This also excludes flights, but I did check on the internet and flights to Cape Town around that time range between 1,900 to 2,500. So that's all up to you. I won't include that. You can add that expense if you see yourself having to book a flight. The transport cost is basically on the assumption that you are going to be using Zelo services because in my opinion that is the cheapest thing to do as well as the most reliable form of transport. 
this is just a rough estimate of how much money you need to spend for rocking the daisies oh i also forgot to mention this obviously excludes the people who want to go on she and get new outfits i feel like if you were to buy new clothes you shouldn't be spending more than 1500 those you can add by yourself if you were to add your flights as well as money for outfits you could see this costing you around 6,100 Rand to 6,600 Rand. I really hope you guys appreciate all this information. Because I was feeling generous. I am just like, I feel like everyone needs to experience rocking the daisies at least once in their life. So I'm giving away one ticket to the Cape Town Rocking the Daisies Festival. Basically, all you have to do is click on the link in the description box to my Instagram, comment down your handle, share the post to your Instagram story, and then afterwards, subscribe to my channel. That's all you have to do. And then I will announce the winner on the 12th of June. You will send me your details and I will transfer the ticket to you. It is that easy. And then I would like to bring this vlog to an end. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it informative. If you do have any questions, please comment comment them down below and I will definitely reply to you. See you guys next time. Bye. On a big homie nigga, don't you get this shit twisted. Middle finger up, finger for the competition. Niggas always talking so you know they never listen. P220 turn a nigga to a Christian.